Uh, Ken Blackerby. Here. Josh Brainerd. Who oh, else going? Patty Crowen. Here. Lenny Nelson. Here. Miles Schlesinger. Here. Max Smith. Here. Okay. That's everybody. So everybody but Marcy. All right. Do we have any agenda changes or revisions? Madam, Madam Chair? Yes, Kim. Um, regarding the discussion on the tree ordinance tonight, I'm, I'm fully prepared to, uh, to discuss that. However, um, considering that tonight's election night and a pretty critical event for the country, I'm wondering if people would be interested in postponing the tree discussion until a later date or a later time so we can stay closer to the election results. I'm ready to talk about it if we need to, but I thought I would raise it. Well, I've already raised it with Patty by email today earlier, so I'm certainly in favor of that. I am as well. I, I would uh, like it to postpone to uh, the next regular meeting so that we can watch the election results. Okay, others, Mac, how do you feel about this? Um, I am ambivalent. Um, I, I'm happy either way. Um, this is would be a, a great change of pace from monitoring the election. <laughs> and, um, I'm also happy to monitor the election. Okay, it, it feels like the majority of, uh, of my commissioners have other things they're interested in. I don't get it, but... Um, so let's um, let's postpone the the tree discussion, defer it to our next meeting, and I I would also ask um, I I sent around to everyone last week, uh, sort of a conceptual idea for um, development of a tree plan that would be the connection between our ordinances and the comp plan. So. I would appreciate it if you'd all um, take a look at that, think about it, and uh, David, if it can be included in our packet for the next meeting, um, then we can move forward with that. All right, Kim. Madam Chair, um, I just want to recognize you for that document. I thought that was uh, nicely put together. I think it's a great concept to use the terminology as, as, as you did, and I um, want to compliment you on that. Um, one other thing is that we should probably also check, I think Richard had some training plan. I don't know if we can postpone that as well. Uh, I think the training is going to be a joint training with the city council, which has not yet been scheduled. Okay. Ah, okay. Well, there you have it. So um, it sounds like uh, we will deal with our um, Prince license appeal and, um, and that, that might take care of it for tonight. Hello, can you hear me folks? Yes, we can, Mr. Prince. Thank you so much. I'm having, a, I'm really struggling with my Zoom here. I apologize. Um, I'm trying to uh, get my picture up and I haven't been able to do so. Okay, well, we can hear you loud and clear. Can, can you hear us okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. So we're, um, we're stepping through some of our, our um, standard issues right now and then we'll be to your, um, to your hearing. Certainly, Commissioner. So we had two, um, two regular meeting summaries attached to our packet this week, um, one from the meeting of September 1st and the other, the regular meeting October 6th. So let's go with the September 1 first. Do I have any um, comments, revisions, changes to those uh, meeting minutes? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Kim. Uh, and I have a second from Josh. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. No discussion. So those are approved. And then we had October 6th, uh, regular meeting minutes. Um, any comments, 
suggestions, changes, revisions? You're doing a good job, Jim. <clears throat> All right, so um, do I have a motion to approve those minutes from October 6th? Okay. Thank you, Lenny. Do I have a second? Second. second. Thanks, Mac. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes are both uh, finalized. Um, we don't have any final orders, resolutions, or written communications. Okay, so now we are up to um, the public hearing deliberation. So um, now the, um, the Planning Commission is going to be functioning as the VRD License Appeals Board. So it is now 610 and I am opening um, the file on uh, APP 2020-04, which is an appeal of a decision of the Planning and Community Development Director denying renewal of a vacation rental dwelling license under LCMC chapter 514 and that um, renewal of the license was to Charles Prince for the residence at 3645 Southwest Coast Avenue. Um, the director's denial was based on non-compliance with LCMC 5.14.080 section E3. Are there any objections to the board's jurisdiction? Okay, board members, are there any abstentions or disqualifications based on conflict of interest, personal bias or ex parte communications? Okay, is there any objection to the participation of any board member? All right, and I think now we're up to the point where uh, Weston, you're going to um, provide a staff report, give us a list of the criteria that apply to this VRD license appeals hearing, please. Mm -hmm. All righty, um, so it has been a while since I've, I've done one of these, so let me know if there's any information that I am leaving out. Um, but the, the appeal was denied based on uh, LCMC 14.14.080E3, which relates to the transient room tax um, remittance. And <clears throat> let's see here. Um, if you look at, at that section of the code, LCMC 5.14080E, says the city will review an application for license renewal and issue renewal of the vacation rental dwelling license provided the following standards are met. Now, standard number three is the one in question and that states that the owner has fully complied with chapter 3.04 LCMC transient room tax, including submitted, submitting the required report for the last quarter of the license year. Um, I was notified by the finance department during this renewal time that the applicant hadn't filed his TRT reports for the past four quarters. Um, now that's an entire year that those reports were not filed. Um, if you look at, a, um, I believe it's exhibit A, um, the finance department uh, certified this non-compliant, or the, no, the renewal application is exhibit A. <laughs> exhibit B um, is for the finance department, Sherry Willette, uh, certifying that she did send out all the required notices and that he was not in compliance for those four quarters um, at the time that the renewal decision was made. So there were there were no other criteria um, except for this uh, for the reason of the denial. Um, Weston, um, was there any communication back once when um, notifications were sent um, did the city receive anything back in response to those notifications? Um, I'm not sure what the finance department received. They typically handle the initial notices um, if, if you are delinquent for each quarter. Um, as Sherry certified, she did send out all the legally required notices. And, and it is important to remember that 
they're remitted on a quarterly period. So these are four different times that the reports were not filed, including the four different notices that had gone out. I did communicate with the appellant um, for quite some time during the renewal period to get those those uh, reports <laughs> in, and they were only submitted after the denial was uh, issued. I see, okay. Okay, any other questions from other commissioners? Kim. Um, I'm just curious, and, and maybe it's not appropriate in, in this situation, um, do we have any pictures of the property or anything like that that we could uh, get an idea of what its condition is? I don't think that's an applicable criterion here. Okay, all right. Had to ask. <laughs> My next okay. question was uh, any other compliance issues or is that the only compliance issue? There was some compliance issues earlier in the year. Um, I don't think they're necessarily relevant to the denial. There was a local representative issue and a noise complaint earlier in the summer. Um, those were the first issues of that nature within the year, and those were not applied to the decision-making process uh, for denying the VRD. It was solely based on the transient room tax uh, non-compliance. Okay. I was wondering uh, if uh, he had mentioned anything for the reason that he did not give it uh, 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 pay the taxes that were due. When the, due. the applicant will have his opportunity uh, to speak, but are you asking whether or not uh, prior to the denial he, he provided that? Uh, no, uh, afterwards. Uh, uh, when he got this uh, uh, letter denying him, did he offer any uh, reason for the denial? Or he for did. The, uh, it's in the appeal uh, document. Yeah, he, he did. I think it's best. It would be best uh, just explained by Charles himself. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, this is the time. Um, for the appellant to testify. So this is your time, um, Mr. Prince, to let us know. Um, your testimony is limited to 15 minutes, including rebuttal. Um, that is not including time answering questions from the board. So um, I'll let you make your, your statement and testify in support of your appeal, and then we will um, move to if there's anyone else um, that wants to speak in either support or opposition or any other testimony. Um, David, is there anybody else in the in the chambers? Madam Chair, no, there is not. Okay, okay. So, Mr. Prince, um, the yes. the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, first of all. I, I have no um, acceptable excuse, I, I think, when I review my actions and my situation, um, but I, I do have an explanation, and it's very personal, and, and it's hard for me to talk about. Um, I lost my uh, fiance in 2019, and um, she was my, uh, my helper and, and the person who, who did all the paperwork. Um, I managed to get through 2019. I did fail to file um, the TRTs for that last quarter. I believe there was only three when the, uh, not that it matters, it doesn't matter, but at any rate, the, the last quarter was the one that was due when I got the notice. Um, all the taxes were paid. It was the TRT filings that weren't made. And I'll, I'll be completely honest, and I guess I'd ask, is this something that's public record, ma'am? Yes, it is. Okay, I can't go into too much detail other than to say that um, I've had some uh, very difficult issues emotionally and uh, physically as well. And again, I, my inaction was based on things that I've been treated for medically. Um, I am doing much better now. Um, I've been working very hard to make things right. And I can tell you that I believe Heaven's View has been a true asset to the community. Um, the home is, I, of course, I canceled when 
when the license was revoked, I'm hoping, I'm praying against, I'm hoping against hope that I don't have to cancel the next bookings, but with Thanksgiving, Christmas and things coming up. Um, but it's just been a very, very, very rough two years. COVID, of course, uh, took a real toll on myself, just as I'm sure it has you and your families. Um, I've just been fighting issues that I feel are under control now, um, as does my doctor. And uh, I've hired a bookkeeper. That's important to know. I do understand now. Sherry Willette was extremely helpful. And I had, I also want to mention, I did come down and did file those three TRT reports in the payment box. Um, it was the first, it was either the first or second day that one on one was open. I, I opened uh, Heaven's View to three different, three or four different families. I'm not, I don't know exactly how many when the fires came. They lost their homes notice. Among them was my housekeeper, Perlita. Um, and they stayed uh, until they were able to find other accommodations. But I was there specifically to check on them and to turn those things in. And I did put them in the box. Uh, they were incorrect. Um, but when I resubmitted them to Sherry, they were incorrect, but I did try. I just, I, I, there's not much I can say in my defense other than I haven't been myself um, for the last 22 or 23 months until very recently. I want to move forward. I want to be an asset to Lincoln City and their VRD department. I've had the only noise complaint I've had since 2014 was this summer. And, and it was COVID season. There was just a lot of people misbehaving in a lot of different places. And, and I've done everything I can to rectify that. Um, I believe I can do a very good job and represent Lincoln City and keep people having fun there for many years to come and that you'll never have a problem with me again. Uh, I guess that's all I have to say, commissioners. Mr. Prince, how long have you had this as a VRD? Since 2014. Since 2014, so six years. Uh, I believe it's, I may have actually, Weston might, well, he might not have access to it, but it might even have been two thir 2013 in September when I purchased it. I apologize. I, I can't remember, but six or seven years. So, so, I so lost. Un understanding that the TRTs need to be filed um, predates the issues from 2019 that you went through. Uh, predates, no, ma'am. My, uh, the, the TRTs that I didn't file began with the January 15th due date. Um, and I actually got the fourth one in before any notice, I believe. I know I turned it in with the, the papers that weren't found. Um, when I initially turned in my, I called up um, in September to ask what to do. And of course the office was still closed. And they told me what they told me when I submitted my, um, my application on uh, June 30th, I was in town and I wanted to submit a person. I didn't realize the offices were closed. They told me to put it in the, the payment box for the uh, things. Um, I know that my application got through. I know that my um, initial application to change. You know the job was dangerous when you took it, Fred. Sorry. I'm sorry, there's some background noise there. Um, I, uh, it wasn't from my computer. The. Uh, I didn't do my job ultimately. I didn't do it in a timely fashion. I did try um, prior to the uh, the notification that my license was revoked. And no, ma'am, my the issues with filing them. I always had help in the past. I never, I never, I never did it myself. I always had help. I lost that, and uh, I struggled to get it done for the first few quarters of 2019. And and the issues happened uh, beginning this year in January and got worse with my issues personally, COVID and, and the other things that, that um, we're all dealing with. Commissioners, any questions? Yes, I have one. Um, this may be for James or somebody. Um, is this the first time that these have there ever been any prior instances at all of of reports not being filed or 
um, taxes not being paid previously since Mr. Prince took ownership? As far as I'm aware of, um, there were no issues except for this past year um, with the quarters of TRT remittance that we're talking about. And then there's a couple of uh, the noise issue right. in the middle of the summer. But other than that, um, I personally am not aware of, of many issues at this house, if any, outside of this past. Uh, so we can months. assume that this was an off year. If you're asking me, sir, um, it's been the most off years of my life and I'm, I'll be 60 soon. Any other questions? So during this, this the four quarters that you were um, not responsive to the request for the TRT, you were responsive to the noise complaint. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So I, f I find that a little odd. But it was I was called um, and contacted. Right, and you were also contacted for the TRT issues. I did receive notice of those. Yeah, uh, yeah. And unfortunately, um, I didn't follow through on my responsibilities. I'll be the first one to admit that. Um, I can tell you that I felt pretty helpless um, at that time. And it wasn't, I didn't do anything willfully or intentionally to disregard or disrespect uh, Lincoln City or the commission at all. Um, and I do, again, I want to emphasize the taxes were paid. It was never an issue of the taxes not being paid. They have been there the entire time. Um, it was the reports, and again, that was my family. Well, then I have a question. Go ahead, Lynn. Um, if you didn't file a report, how did you know how much taxes to pay? I didn't, ma'am. They're all filed through, I only book through Airbnb and VRBO Homeway and other sites that remit the taxes on my behalf. Well, yeah, but then I, it's been a while since I've done it, but I have done that in process in the past and there's a cal several calculations to be made if yes ma'am through the report how did you make the calculations i went through i had to learn again sherry helped me um in this process i i i had done everything wrong in my first attempt anyway and uh uh sherry sent me a copy of the one that i sent her corrected and she showed me how to do it and uh i was able to figure it out. I have hired a bookkeeper in the meantime. I really do need help with those things ultimately. But you filled you filled out the report after discussing it with Sherry, but you still didn't turn them in? Oh no ma'am, they were turned in. They're That's all in place. But, the, but the reports weren't. They were turned in after the denial, correct? I did attempt on either September 9th or 10th, I believe the first day one one was open. I did attempt to deliver them. It would have been the three that were missing. That fourth one still wasn't due until September 15th. Um, and this was just before that. Um, but no, I, I, I wasn't successful and they were wrong anyway. Well, I need to be clear about this. Um, you've, you actually remitted the amount of money that was no report to the city four no, times. No, ma'am. Uh, again, I don't handle any of the tax money. None of that money was ever in my account or in my possession. It's sent directly from the different uh, platforms, HomeAway, Airbnb. And again, I, I don't do anything outside of that. And uh, all of that money is sent by them quarterly. I learned from Sherry that who, who apparently they're not sent on behalf of an individual, the TRTs or somehow what I don't understand the entire process, but the TRTs are somehow what allowed them to know where the money is allocated. Uh, so all of the money was sent quarterly. It was never an issue of me having an extra penny in my pocket. Weston. So if I may clarify here, um, the way it works with Airbnb and other um, online booking platforms, the state requires them to remit their tax money um, I believe on a quarterly basis, but they do not indicate which individuals paid which amount of tax 
for which times. We rely on the applicants themselves to self-report the tax so we know whether or not the tax was paid or whether or not they had bookings outside of Airbnb. Um, so there are many other reasons of why you'd expect a report. Um, if part of the reason is to be able to track whether or not Airbnb did in fact remit all of that rentals taxes. Um, it, and it's also important to notice that the, the reporting is part of the requirement to be in compliance with the transient room tax ordinance. So as far as the code is concerned, the report, reporting is an important component um, of that criteria. Oh, I, I, I fully concur. Go ahead, Lenny. Oh, I'm just going to say I fully concur with what, what you said there as far as the report. I was just trying to understand this, but thank you. Yeah. So, so just sort of to summarize this, the, there's an important requirement to maintain a license in good standing to run a VRD in the city, and that is that it is the obligation of the owner to file a TRT on a quarterly basis. The city sends out notices to the applicant or to the um, to the owners to file these TRTs. And for the last year, they have not been filed for this particular dwelling. So the applicant, the, I keep wanting to say the applicant, the, the appellant is, um, suggesting that the taxes were paid so the TRT requirement is somehow not as important but that's not how our code is written it's not, not a requirement I'm, I'm sorry I'm speaking here Charles it's a requirement that the owner file this it's an activity that the owner has to take in order to stay in good standing so irregardless of what um, Airbnb or VRBO or anybody else is doing, this is a requirement to keep a license in good standing. Is that about sum it up, Weston? Yeah, I would say that's a pretty good summary. Okay. Obviously, it would be worse if the taxes weren't paid. Sure. Um, you know, the taxes and the reporting are, are part of the same issue. You know, kind of like income tax, you may take some of that tax out as withholdings, but if you don't file your taxes, then there's no way to know exactly where the breakdown was or right. whether that encompasses all your income. Um, right. There's no way to get an accurate report and we do rely on, on self-reporting um, for the collection of those taxes. Right, because it's a business. It, Correct. It, right, it's, it's a business in the city. All right, any other questions for Mr. Prince? I'm sorry, I'm having to toggle back and forth so I lose sight of y'all. Anybody have a hand up or any questions at all? Okay. So um, I guess I do I need a, a motion to close the hearing, Mr. Apicello? Can't hear you. Uh, you're mute, you're muted. Sorry, yeah, a motion to close the hearing and the record would be advised. Okay, do I have a motion to close the hearing and the record? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed to closing the hearing? Okay, so the hearing uh, uh, is closed um discussion so the possible motions that we would have uh, as i see it is the motion um, to deny the appeal which would affirm the planning and community development director's decision to deny the license or a motion to approve the appeal which would overturn the planning and community development director's decision so, Madam Chair, Commissioner's thoughts. Yes, Kim. Uh, I, I'm wondering if one of the things as I read through this and I've been listening to Mr. Prince and, and, and thinking this through, I'm wondering if there's another option and, and is there an option of the so-called probationary status of sorts that gives him a one more strike to say if he fails to file one 
report within the next two years or one year that he would lose at that point? I realize that throws a wrinkle into it, but. Well, is... it, it, it only throws a wrinkle into it if it was actually part of our enforcement, but it's not. So we don't have. We don't have that option. Um, we don't have that option. It's a, it's an up or down as I understand it, correct, Mr. Apicello? Yeah, this is a quasi-judicial hearing uh, concerning whether or not there's a basis, an error uh, by staff in making a decision that staff made. That's what you're here to decide. Um, now, I understand that the basis for appeal really didn't explain, uh, if you read the appeal, didn't really explain a legal basis for the appeal. It just was explanation. It wasn't an identification of legal error. So I understand how you might get a little bit off track here, but remember, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. We're not, we're not, uh, that's why we're here. Okay. Right, right. So it, it's, did they make the right call based on the law that we have in front of us? Miles? Wondering if uh, the, the alternatives that you, uh, the two that you mentioned uh, are the only ones because I'd be inclined to uh, give him one more chance before removing the license because he was a good citizen as I understand his testimony and used the home for uh, people who were displaced by the uh, Echo Creek fire, and I think that uh, housing units are very important in the Lincoln County area right now. Um, well, the short the short answer, Miles, is we don't have a third option. This, as Mr. Apicello pointed out, this is a quasi judicial decision based on whether or not there was an error made in the decision from the planning director. Mac. Um, yeah, I, I just, to that point, um, regardless of uh, however we may uh, feel for Mr. Prince, um, we're, we're here looking at whether or not the, the original decision was an error. And um, I, I, Based on what I have seen and what has been presented to me, I can't find an error with the original ruling, regardless of however much sympathy I may have for Mr. Prince in his situation. Uh, the letter of the law reads as the letter of the law, and uh, we have a yes or no decision. And yeah, I, I do believe that the uh, as it was handed down, the, the original decision is correct. Okay, thank you. Josh, do you have a comment to make on this? And unmute you for, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I use, the, I use the space bar, it works out pretty well. Good. Um, I, I agree with my fellow commissioners. I'm sure this is gonna be echoed with everyone. I, the same thing, we do truly feel for his personal situation, um, for the adult's personal situation and um, the, the stacks of uh, life challenges that have been put on everyone here most recently and, and how that can play out. Um, but once again, um, as, you know, as Mr. Apicello said, and as the decision sets before us, we're not we're not judging we're not judging the appellant's character. Uh, if we were, I'm sure it would be great. Um, but we're we're making a decision based, you know, coldly and, and solidly, yes or no, off of if the staff made the correct decision here. And um, in my opinion, the staff has, of course, translated clearly um, what they what they had to do in this circumstance. Okay, do I have a motion to deny the appeal? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, thank you. And um, all in favor, uh, do we need a roll call for this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> James, could we have a roll call for the vote, please? Thank you. Kim Blackerby. Yay. Uh, Josh Brainer. Yay. 
Patty Crowan. Yes. Lenny Nelson. Yes. Miles Plessinger. No. Max Smith. Yes. Okay, so the outcome is five to one uh, in favor of the motion. Okay, so um, based on this decision, the staff uh, is directed to prepare a final order for adoption at our next meeting. I have a question. Yes, Lenny. I didn't want it to sound like it was part of the decision making, but I don't know that much about VRDs. Can he apply again some other day? And does he have to start from scratch? That's a that's an excellent question. Weston? Yeah. The answer is yes, he can apply. There um, there are there is a short there is a waiting list though. Uh, that he can apply. He can apply. He can put his name on that waiting list. Mm -hmm. He can also apply for an accessory VRD in the interim. What's that? The 30 days or less, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, Next on the agenda, excuse me, is old business, which is continuation of the tree ordinance work discussion. And we're going to defer that to our next meeting. Um, do we have any new business? Ron, do you have any information on uh, um, planning director hiring status? Yeah, they, they closed. The headhunters finished his review. And I believe the interviews are scheduled for next week. I don't remember the date though. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Apicello, I think our, our uh, commission training is set aside until we're in joint session with city council. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Matt, did you have your hand up? Oh, uh, yeah, it was just a, a really quick thought, uh, but uh, it, it, it's better discussed at a later time. Oh, okay. Well, okay then. All right, any other reports or comments? Okay, future agenda items, David? Do we have anything coming up besides trees? James, you're nodding yes, and David's doing no. So which is it? We have we have oh. two hearings currently on the schedule for December first. One of them is a variance, and the other one is uh, Lincoln Palisade stays five. Okay, and that's for December first. That's yes. for December first. So the meeting after next. Okay, so our next meeting. Do you have that date in front of you? Seventeenth. Yeah, the seventeenth. Seventeenth. Okay, so we're gonna get back to trees on the 17th. Um, all right, anything else for the good of the order? Seeing nothing, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You care all. Stop, CJ.